Server-side rendering is a new hosting model for Blazor in .NET 8. We'll show you how to set it up in Visual Studio, how it works, and what happens when you try to add an interactive function to a Razor component. Remember to hit the subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash at round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. To set up a Blazor app for server-side rendering in .NET 8, we can select the Blazor web app template in Visual Studio. We go ahead and we add a project name, so we're going to call it roundthecode.ssr, which stands for server-side rendering, and we'll click on next. On the next screen, we can select things like the framework and the authentication type, and we have two new options here. We've got the interactivity type. This gives us all the different hosting models, so we can select the traditional hosting models like server or WebAssembly. We can also combine the two, but if we leave it as none, that will set up server-side rendering for us. We also have interactivity location where we can select a host and model on a page or component, or we can set it up on the project. It doesn't make an awful lot of difference with server-side rendering, so we're gonna select global and create the project. With the project set up, I wanna show you how it sets up server-side rendering in the Blazor application. So if we open up program.cs, we've got the add razor components extension method being called for the iService collection. This goes ahead and sets up server-side rendering. We run the project now, I want to show you how it works. With a Chrome tab open and network tools, let's go ahead and load the application into the browser. We can see on the right hand side here that the application has loaded in various resources like the web page, some CSS files, JavaScript files and SVGs. Now this is a bit like MVC, but there is one fundamental difference. When you click on a page in the web application, rather than downloading the whole web page, it just goes ahead and updates the resources it needs. And we can demonstrate that by clicking on the Weather link. And we can see here it's only downloaded the Weather HTML page as well as the FAF icon. So that's one of the major benefits with Blazor SSR over MVC. Learn Blazor WebAssembly with our three part online course series, as well as other .NET courses at roundthecode.com slash courses. Unlike server and WebAssembly hosting models, the SSR hosting model doesn't support front-end interactivity. And I can demonstrate that to you. We've got a title property here, which gets set when the component is initialized. It gets set to hello world and gets displayed within the H1 tag. Now what we're gonna to attempt to do is we're gonna create a button. And when this button is clicked on, we're gonna to attempt to update the title. In order to do that, we'll create a new method and we're gonna call it click me. And within that, we're going to update the title to click me. Lastly, we need to bind the click me method to the on click attribute in the button. Now, what should happen here is that when we click on the button, it shouldn't update the title. It should remain at hello world. Let's see what happens when we run the application. So when we click on the button, we can see that the title hasn't been updated. So if you want that sort of interactivity, you really need to select either a server or WebAssembly hosting model for your project. As well as SSR, Blazor has another new feature for choosing the hosting model per component. This makes Blazor an excellent web framework choice going forward. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.